Hey, welcome to another episode of Indie Authors. Uh, tonight is Indie Authors 44, and we have a great show for you. I'm excited to introduce our guest, Grant Faulkner. Grant is the Executive Director of NaNoWriMo, which stands for National November Writing Month. Grant, thanks so much for being with here tonight. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm already tripping up on my tongue. We also have <laughs> authors Lisa Grace. Lisa, thanks for being thanks. here. Thanks for having me, Jason. Nice. R. M. Prelo. Hi. And hey. Samantha and Samantha Fury. Another nano head here. <laughs> right. The neat thing about the authors in this group, including myself, is is we're not only published authors, but we're also all participants and winners of NaNoWriMo, and, and that's true for you too, Grant, isn't that right? That's right, yeah. I've participated <laughs> three times and won once. Okay, now I, I said what NaNoWriMo stands for. Can you tell our audience a little bit more about what NaNoWriMo really is? Yeah, it's, 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 at, its, at its most fundamental level, it is a challenge to write 50,000 words in, in the month of November in 30 days. So you have to write about 1,667 words a day to finish the novel. Um, but I think it's about much more than that, really. Um, it's, it's about setting a, an audacious goal for yourself and having the persistence to, to reach that goal. Um, it's about um, reaching that goal with a community of other writers. Um, during the month of November, we have hundred like any time you go to our forums, there'll be like a hundred thousand people there on the website talking about writing and encouraging everybody else on. Um, so we're really uh, uh, different than a lot of um, other writing organizations in that we don't stress we don't stress the perfection of a final pro project. We, we we stress just the the, the joyful. Um, creativity it, it, into, unto itself is, is worth something. Um, so even though we, we take a lot of pleasure when people publish their novels, we, we also just like people, we always like the doing of it. So um, yeah, I think that, that kind of sums it up a little bit. It's, it's very controlled, unbridled creativity. That, there you go. It really isn't about control. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just the, the essence of of committing to one month of writing gangbusters basically almost every day or every day that's that's tough for a lot of people to do it's very tough and I think that's why it's it's really good well I think it's good for a lot of different people but it's 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 I think especially good for people who've never written a novel before uh, we believe that everyone has a story within them or many stories within them um, but 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 people tend to say oh someday I'm gonna write that novel you know, just like we say, someday we're going to do blank. Um, and it's, you know, life gets busy and it's hard to make that day actually come. And so National Novel Writing Month is, is sort of an invitation to make it finally happen and to do it in just 30 days. Um, so, you know, as we've seen, like you, you can write 50,000 words in a month. And just by doing that, then you, you can call yourself a novelist and you can, you can take it from there. And, and we've seen many people do that. How did um, how did Nano start? What what was its uh, foundation? Yeah, I, it started in a very random way. Uh, Chris Beatty uh, is the founder, and he started with twenty one of his his friends in San Francisco in nineteen ninety nine, and it was basically just a challenge. They were like, "Hey, let's let, let's see if we can write a novel in a month." Um, and so they got together and they sat in coffee shops together. That was the kind of beginning of the the community feel. Of National Novel Writing Month, and they gave each other other challenges like, you can't go to the bathroom until you you know write 500 words, or you know like if you write a thousand words, you'll get a latte, something like that. And so there were rewards. <laughs> well, I, I'm in the midst of training my dog, so I know that there's like aversive techniques and reward techniques, <laughs> and so they were doing both of those and just having a good time. Um, and six of the 21 people finished their novels, um, and then the next year. Those friends told other friends, and about 130 or 40 people did it. Um, and then the third year, um, Chris had a friend who created a website, and about 5,000 people did it. Um, and then it's just taken off, you know, with a viral contagion since then. Uh, over 300,000 people did it last year. And so the third year was the first year of the website, basically? Yeah. Yeah, and that was the year that it got written up in the Los Angeles Times, um, and you know I think it was like when blogging was just starting to take off. So there started to be all these online mechanisms that just kind of like furthered the spread of the word. Um, 
And I think a lot of people just, you know, like running a marathon or climbing a mountain. Writing a novel is something that, that a lot of people want to do. Okay. Um, I assume that I'm sharing the, uh, the Nano website right now. Can everyone see it? Yes. Okay. And obviously I'm logged in because it says, Howdy, Jason Matthews. Um, the <laughs> website is uh, Nano, N-A-N-O, Rymo, W-R-I-M-O dot org. And this is free for anyone to join in. <laughs> yeah. Um, you want to join in and create an account. And um, basically, you're going to, oops, this is, this is the, um, the now what page. This is the main page. Mm -hmm. um, what, um, why don't you tell us, Grant, what would be the first things for, for newcomers to do once they come to this page? Well, if you're not logged in, what you can see on, on the page, you can see a way to sign up. And so okay. that, that's, that's where I'd go. Um, and but there are a lot of different things here. Like if you want to read the about section up there, can tell you a little bit more about the event itself. Um, I think you're not maybe not getting all that. Oh, there it is. Yep. Yeah. So this this kind of describes it. And, and like I said, it's, it is just a, in some ways a very simple event, right? Fifty thousand words in thirty days. And, and what I neglected to mention is is that um, we have six hundred and fifty mu municipal liaisons, volunteers around the world who it's. There's a big online component to writing a novel, but there's also a big face-to-face -face community component. And so our volunteers arrange what we call write-ins um, that might happen in cafes or bookstores or libraries. Um, and people get together and write together. And so the second thing I'd do after signing up for NaNoWriMo would be to, um, to, to you know, fill out your profile and to choose a region um, so that you can, com you can get involved with your, the, the community of writers um, near where you live. And yeah. on the on the website there, it said in 2011 there were uh, over 200,000 participants, and and uh, you told me that in 2012, I believe it was 341,000 participants. Right. Exactly. Uh, this this sounds like the biggest organized writing event in the world. It me. is. We have not been able to find a writing event nearly as big. I think I think I think other writing events are hundreds of thousands behind us right now. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, if I'm doing my math correctly, you just had your 14th year of NaNoWriMo. Yeah. And uh, well over a quarter of a million people. Um, out of 341,000, how many uh, winners, people who made it to the, the 50,000 mark, uh, did you have this last uh, November? Yeah, so it varies every year, but I would say our, our, our solid average is about 15% of, of the people who sign up win. Um, and so, um, which is a real testament to how, how hard it is to do, you know, how much, how much perseverance it takes and how much just organization in your life. I mean, to find time to write 1,700 words a day is difficult for a lot of people. Uh, but we do hear amazing stories about pe single moms with kids who, and who are working all, you know, 40 hours a week, but they find a way to squeeze in that, that little bit of time to write every day. And that's all it takes. That's kind of what the program is about. Just sh show up every day. Write your quota words, and and that will incrementally build itself into something big. Okay, okay. Um, that many people that must require a staff of more than just you and and uh, the founder. Tell tell us more about what it takes to run NanoRimo. Yeah. Um, Why? Well, I, I would say you know with with it being the largest writing event in the world, and not many events in the world. Go, go! You know, have hundred, hundreds of thousands of people participate. So one could, I, I, I could probably say that we have a staff of fifty or a hundred, and probably convince people that that was true. But we've got a staff of nine people, um, really small staff, a really small budget. And by the way, we're we're a nonprofit. We're a five hundred one c three, and and we strive to keep everything um, as low cost or as free as possible. Um, so yeah, we have two technologists, we have a director of programs who oversees um, NaNoWriMo, Camp NaNoWriMo and the Young Writers Program. We have a, a communications director, uh, we have what we call an office captain, which is like a business manager, uh, a deputy director who oversees operations and finance, um, and I'm probably forgetting, oh yeah, our, our director of community engagement, she oversees all the volunteers. And then we have a forums moderator because our forums are just just wild with with comments, just just thousands and thousands of comments there. Um, uh, these these sound like full time positions to me. 
Yeah, full-time positions, and then we, we always have a few um, really great interns that help out a lot. And then, and then as I said, we have, um, we have a lot of volunteers beyond the municip municipal liaisons um, who organize the write-ins. We do have other uh, NaNoWriMo veterans who help us you know, throughout the year, and we, we couldn't do it without them. They're really valuable. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know that you have donation boxes, and and when I participated, I was I was more than happy to donate. Uh, mm -hmm. It was it was a Thank good you. thing. Good. Well, you're welcome. It was a good thing for me to do, and I felt right doing it. And I'm imagining that a large or a decent percentage of participants probably do make donations. Uh, do you have um, any corporate sponsors or other other ways of generating uh, income? Yeah, you know, individual donations are the core of how we how we make the money to put on NaNoWriMo. Uh, individual donations and, and then merchandise sales, like the t-shirts and the posters. I think that accounts for about 60% of our revenue, uh, maybe even a little more than that. Um, and we always say that if, if, if everyone gave $10, we would never have to fundraise again, <laughs> you know. So it's only it's only $10 per participant. That's, you know, we're, out, we're not asking for a lot. Um, but that said, so we do have some corporate sponsors, and we try to look for corporate sponsors who um, are in the writing world and have good products to offer our writers. So, for instance, Scrivener Software actually was developed during NaNoWriMo, the, 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 the coder for that. Um, he was a writer, and he didn't the software he was using, I'm not sure what it was, but it wasn't sufficient for him, so he developed Scrivener. Uh, the same thing with Storia Softner, Software that was developed by a NaNoWriMo participant. So... It's interesting what technology has come out of a writing event, you know, to serve writers, and then Create Space is is a is a huge sponsor, and they help you know uh, people publish the, self publish their novels, and every year they offer uh, five free co codes for five free copies of, of of your novel. So I think everyone should take part, you know, take advantage of that. With um with so many novels either getting started or being finished in the month of November. Uh, surely there must be some really good success stories. Can can you share yeah. some of the some of the successes that have had their their origin in NaNoWriMo? Yeah, we every year more and more come along, and um, it's always just so wonderful to hear about them. I think Sarah Gruen was our first big success. Who did Water Like Elephants, which was, became a movie with Reese Witherspoon and was a best-selling book. Um, but then since then, we've had Aaron Morgenstern with Night Circus. I think that. It's a best-selling book, and I think it's been an option for a movie as well. Might even be in production. Um, Marissa Meyer wrote Cinder. Um, Jennifer Albin wrote Cruel. And then Hugh Howey's been an amazing. I know he's appeared on your show, and he's just he's just amazing what he's doing. Um, he, he we did a webinar with him a few weeks ago, and um, he yeah they call him the E.L. James of science fiction <laughs> nowadays. Um, and I I think he you know. I, I, he might not like that because he's he's not writing erotic <laughs> science fiction. He's writing really really good dystopian <laughs> science fiction. But yeah, you know his 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 novel just got picked up by Ridley Scott, and I think it's in production. And uh, so yeah, we're really proud of of, of success stories like that. Um, as executive director of NaNoWriMo, what are some of the the challenges of your job? Yeah, I think it's it, the biggest challenge is balancing dreams with reality. Um, there is just so much we can do with the event. There's so many ways we can build our Young Writers Program, which is is a version of National, National Novel Writing Month that we uh, bring to about 2,000 classrooms every year, and we provide teachers with free curriculum and and uh, classroom kits to help them teach National Novel Writing Month, and 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 it's just been a really successful program. But we, you know, we could use a lot more resources to to beef that up and truly make it grow. And the same thing with uh, National Novel Writing Month. I mean, I think we're such a, a distinct event, like I said, that we have such a strong community of people and writers, and, and they like being like on our website and writing together more than they like being on uh, some other writing <laughs> websites. Um, and so I think there's so many ways that we could, um, you know, build that kind of online infrastructure to help them do things like, you know, form critique groups or share share their writing and get feedback, you know, a lot of things like that that are quite involved technologically. So, um, you know, we, we have tons of ideas, no shortage of ideas, and so it's all a matter of prioritization and kind of figuring out what's, what's you know, what we can do, uh, because our main task every year is putting on the biggest writing event in the world. Um, so, yeah, it's always, always trying to, it's always frustrating knowing you can do ten more things, but that you can only do <laughs> one reasonably, you know. Yeah. With yeah. The, the tremendous success uh, of the participation and, and the donations and the success stories that are coming out, 
Um, has this event uh, caught the attention of traditional publishers and agents and what kind of response um, have you gotten, if any, uh, from places like that? Yeah, I think we're getting more and more uh, interest. Like this year one of our sponsors was Avon Books and they did a sponsorship where they um, were soliciting nano romance novels and then right now they're in the process of deciding if they will publish one of those novels. Um, we just had interest as, as a sponsor from Swoon Reads, a new imprint from Macmillan. Um, so I, I, I think the interest is really, um, as, as writers like, like a Hugh Howey really catch on, you know, I, I think, um, you know, New York, which, which has its own sort of like gates to the publishing world, I think they're <laughs> opening a, a little bit more as they see that, you know, um, they can't be the gatekeepers like they used to, used to be, you know. Um, I think I think in the past there's been a little bit of snobbishness towards NaNoWriMo, but I think I think that that's changing as 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 more of our, our writers become so successful. Um, all of our panelists here are, are previous winners, and I know that you get you get a badge, uh, a NaNoWriMo winners badge that that goes forever on your um, profile page at Nano. Yeah. But you can also proudly display it on your blog or website. Um, in fact, I might uh, I might have to show one of those badges. Uh, but in the meantime, let me ask: What are some of the other uh, benefits? Not just the fact that you'll have fifty thousand words written on a novel. What are some of the other benefits of being a winner of Nano? Yeah. Um, well, are you talking about like kind of the personal benefits? What one can get out of the event? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Personal or even material. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think personally, um, I think people get a lot of things like like just that ability to set a goal and achieve that goal, and there's so much that goes into that. Just just perseverance, um, time management. Um, you know, I think I think a lot of people it is like they they they've defined their life as being a, like a solitary writer, and so being able to like participate in a community is a huge benefit. Um, let me see. I, I I wrote a little short list here. I'm gonna click on them and just read them. Um, yeah, I think like things like accountability, um, and and then like you know we we uh, have fun while doing it. Nanorimo isn't this dead serious event where everyone hunkers down and, and just writes in the you know under un, under the you know, stormy skies of November. Um, you know, it's it, we, we we prize whimsy and we prize having fun. We pr prize mm -hmm. self deprecation. And so, you know, writing doesn't have to be this uh, dark, gloomy affair. You know, we like we like to lighten things up a bit. And so, I think that that appeals to a lot of people as well. That they don't have to take themselves so seriously as a writer. You know, and and you're leading by example. This is uh, this is your profile page <laughs> uh, at NaNoWriMo. And so, this is you get recognition of being a winner. So, so this last uh, that's right. Last yeah. November, you participated. You won. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Um, yeah. Do you do a different Do you do a different story each year, or or do you sometimes work on the same story? What's your approach with this grant? Yeah, <laughs> I think the official the official rules, you know, um, which you know are are on tablets in the Library of Congress or you know, <laughs> something like that. Um, I think you're supposed to write a new novel, start from mm -hmm. scratch on day one. Um, there are what we call nano rebels. Um, and they um, they will you know rebel. They might write short stories. They might um, uh, work on uh, a novel that they've written previously. Um, so even though even though they're not fitting into the technical legal grounds of, of NaNoWriMo, I'd, I'd never tell somebody that they shouldn't write. So you know, we 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 welcome Nano Rebels as well, because all writing is good. I'm um, I'm backtracking just a tiny bit because there's a yeah. page on the on the Nano website that I wanted to share. This is um, some of your published Nano novelists. Yeah. And, um, actually, I may have to refresh the page because I think I've been here for a little while. We'll see some of the um, covers that come up sooner. Um, can you tell us what what we're looking at on this page? Yeah, that's just a, a widget from Amazon that uh, we plugged in all of the all of the books that are on that page. If you scroll down on the page, we have them listed alphabetically by author. Okay, um, okay. Yeah, so that's where you'll see, like, Sarah Gruen's work. And, um, you know, Sarah Gruen, I, I mean, you know, she wrote her, uh, Water, uh, the Elephant's book um, during Nana, but she's also written um, 
her, her other books too. She likes to develop new work through NaNoWriMo. We hear that a lot from authors. Um, in fact, I think Hugh Howey has written three or four of his novels during NaNoWriMo. That's exactly what Hugh said. In fact, he said that he does um, basically tries to finish um, a novel each November during this event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and Jennifer uh, Albin is doing it right now during Camp NaNoWriMo, and that's, that's our event that uh, it's basically NaNoWriMo, but it happens during April and July. So it's a little bit of a pared down version of NaNoWriMo. Yeah. And this year we've structured that, so we're very welcoming to Nano Rebels. So you can you can put in a flexible word count or you can write in other forms, like people are writing poems. I'm writing 30 pieces of flash fiction in 30 days, um, which I'm hoping to get up to about 10,000 words. So it's, it's an event that's a little more flexible. Um, we have a question coming from our panelist about uh, the Office of Letters and Light. Can you tell us yeah. what that is? Yeah, thanks for asking that. Um, that is the official 501c3 nonprofit organization that oversees National Novel Writing Month. Um, and so I haven't mentioned that just because very few people know what oh. that is. Um, uh, but but if you go to like our donation station on the website, you will be donating to that organization as opposed to National Novel Writing Month. But but don't worry, it's it's still us. <laughs> okay okay. Um, what about other months of the year? Uh, obviously November is is just uh, one twelfth of the year. What what kind yeah. of things might be going on during other months? Yeah. So I mean November is one twelfth of the year, but a lot of the year goes goes into preparation for NaNoWriMo. I mean right now our technologists are working on various things to improve the site. Um, and then like this year we 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 did an, a new initiative called I, I wrote a novel now what. And so in the months of January and February we had a couple webinars on self publishing and and what to do with your book after NaNoWriMo to get it ready for publishing and we posted a lot of blog posts on revision and self-editing and, and writing writers groups and how to receive feedback and so we're really trying to to grow NaNoWriMo so that you know we do a really good job of, of a lot of people write their first drafts with us but we'd like to help them with the next steps and so we're going to try to continue to grow that program um, in the future and we actually have a webinar on revision with the book doctors coming up in May and then my, my handy revision mug here just be in our store in May there you go a little product placement <laughs> um, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then and then, like I said earlier, I made allusions to Camp NaNoWriMo, which is in uh, April and July, and then the Young Writers Program, which is our program in, in the schools in, in November. Or so, so it's pretty much a year round. We're pretty busy every day. Um, it's a it's a fun uh, workplace. A lot of joking around, a lot of you know encouragement, but it's also like we're we're working the whole time. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, Samantha has a question about um, editing time and your recommendations. Go ahead, Samantha. I don't think that was me, but I can do it. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. I'm <laughs> I sorry. It was Lisa. It, it was Lisa. My, Go ahead, Lisa. Me. Yeah, I, I know after NaNoWriMo, you do give people a period of time that they can edit their book before they get their five free copies from CreateSpace. So you don't want people to just rush out and get their unfinished, uh, un, you know, maybe not the most professional workout right away. And right. how much time do you give them? Yeah, I think, it, I think it's June 30th when that code expires. Okay. And, you, and, and you get those five free copies um, if, if you win. Um, and there's a winner's page on the website that's still up there on the home page. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll send a reminder out to all the winners about a month before that expires. So, so we'll make sure that you have plenty of heads up to use it. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a great benefit, I think. Great, yeah, I, I think so too. Yeah. Uh, Grant, I want to ask yeah. you about another um, website that that you're sometimes involved with. It's called uh, One Hundred Word Story dot org. What what yeah. is this all about? Yeah, I kind of did this on a lark. Um, I, a friend of mine wrote a memoir of a hundred one hundred word stories, and I just started writing them based on that. And then a friend and I uh, got together and said, "Hey, you know, there's, there's, you know, it's, it's. We are thinking that it's a niche within a niche. Flash fiction is a niche unto itself, and then hundred word stories are are a part of that niche. And we thought, the way people read these days on their mobile devices or on email, that a hundred words is kind of the perfect length for a story. 
And it was a real challenge as a writer to, for me to write for brevity instead of length. You know, I was so used to writing novels. And so it's a really interesting writing exercise to write so short. And, and they're all exactly 100 words. And so we started this about a couple years ago. And um, it's, it's like NaNoWriMo, it's, it's been interesting to me because it's opened me up to a, com a community of writers. And it's the first time I've been on the other side of writing. Like I've, I've always submitted my writer my writing to, to editors to decide whether to publish or not. And so now that I'm on this side of it, you know, it's, it's, it's just it really instructive to me to see what makes a piece publishable versus not publishable, at least in my estimation, you know. Um, and it, it, so, so it helps me with my own writing and, and, and submission process as well. I'm, I'm not sure what, what sounds harder to me, writing a story in 100 words <laughs> or, or writing 50,000 words in a month? It's, it's a good question. Thomas, uh, what Mark Twain said, I would have, he has this famous quote, I would have written it shorter if I'd had more time. <laughs> <laughs> so brevity is sometimes, yeah, you, you can look at it and it can look easy, but it's tough to pull off, I think. Um, because the evolution of nano has been so much, so quickly, yeah. um, I, I understand it must be difficult to look very far into the future, but, mm -hmm. but uh, if you do attempt to look into the future to, to pull out your crystal ball or to, to put on your, um, your uh, see-through glasses that can see through time, what do you think may, may hold uh, for Nano in the next few years? Gosh, you know, um, I'd like to think that we continue to do what we do best, which is to provide this this kind of wacky, whimsical writing event and to keep finding ways to do it better, meaning keep finding ways to bring people together online and, and offline and, and just keeping that, that kind of core strength, really nurturing that. I mean, I think that that's, that's the true goal. There's so much to build on there. And so many people come to us every year to write novels that, that we just kind of want to serve them better and find ways to do that. And then I guess, you know, beyond that, just focusing on the event itself and, and making sure that we don't stray from, like, what makes that event so special. Um, you know, I think, I think things like, like I talked about, helping people with those next stages of their novel, helping them progress as writers, you know, really realize their dreams. That's, that's what we're really about, is helping people realize their dreams. And, and I shouldn't, you know, part, a lot of people's dreams, it, it's to publish their books. But a lot of people's dreams, you know, is just to come out and write and have fun writing. And so... And so we don't want to privilege one or the one over the other. We, I, I really enjoy seeing people who just get together in a library and they're just writing together and having fun, and, and they're just doing it for the act, for the joy of the act itself. Excellent, excellent. We have a yeah. couple more questions I know of. Uh, Samantha has a good one. Uh, go ahead, Sam. Do you have anything in the plans for the future of connecting these all these new authors with like cover artists and editors? Because I've been doing this since two thousand and eight, and I've won five times. All oh, right. <laughs> but and uh, I love Nano, you know, and we have a lot of Nano groups and the official Nano word count thread and all these kind of things on our forums. Yeah. So, and that that's what I found that's hard is finding that perfect cover and that perfect editor. Yeah, yeah, that's a good that's a good point, and I think a lot of people struggle with that. Um, um, so I think that's that's a great suggestion. Um, I, I, I'd love actually for you to email that to me so I can put it on my <laughs> list. Yeah, because you know, I mean, that's the other thing that's interesting about Nanorimo to me is that it's I, I don't really view it as being led by the Nanorimo headquarters. You know, I, I feel like so many of our good ideas come from the participants, and I really feel like the community it's 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 the community of writers. It's 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 your event. So you know, that's the way we grow. That's the best way we grow. Yes. Yeah. Um, RM, did you have something that you wanted to add? Well, I just had more of a, a comment. Um, I mm -hmm. just want to say that I really, really love the Anno. I mean, if it hadn't been for this for this event, you know, I would have not been writing probably. I mean, I it it kind of boosted me to to get serious with writing, and I really encourage you know. I want to encourage, you know, anybody that's, you know, wondering, you know, or thinking about writing something that I think this would be a perfect um, yes. event for them to take part in because, you know, you can set your own goals and, you know, just putting it on paper is just, that's, that's the goal enough. I mean, because not many people have the, you know, are brave enough to just sit down and have a discipline. So I really think that this organization and this, this whole um, this whole event has been so helpful for so many people 
um, you know, and I, you know, I definitely I donate, you know, because I really think this is really <laughs> worth, you know, you know, you're you're promoting creativity, you know, to the world. So I think it's really awesome. And, yeah. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, just to just to piggyback on that a little bit. Um, sorry, I'm getting an echo, but. Um, yeah, I think I, I think I think it's exactly. Oops, am I frozen? No, you're oh, fine. There. You're okay. fine. Sorry about that. <laughs> I lost lost my train of thought and all that. But um, yeah, I, th I I think that sometimes we've privileged the notion of what a writer is, and I think I think we've societally made a writer like a, this very kind of special, you know, put put a writer on 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 a on a pedestal when when when, when we're all, we're all writers and I think that's what NaNoWriMo does it makes us all realize that we we're writers too you don't have to be a published novelist from a from a published you know new publishing house in New York City to call yourself a writer you know you can you can write a novel in a month and you're a writer too yeah I agree with that and and I can't think of anything that's done you know more for for independent authors um, than NaNoWriMo in terms of, of organizing, getting people together, getting them excited about it, giving each other support. It's a tremendous support group of people when you participate in NaNo. Um, as RM said, and all of the authors here are saying, I mean, it's, it's just a great event to participate in. And the amount of creativity that comes out of this month is, is probably unmatched anywhere in the world, basically. Yeah. So, uh, we're all we're all here highly recommending it, but but more importantly, just wanted to to get to know it better. And yeah. uh, Grant, you've been really helpful for that tonight. Well, thank you, thank you so much. I I really enjoyed being here. It was great to talk with you. Well, our pleasure, and I want to thank uh, Lisa Grace, R. M. Prelo, Samantha Fury, uh, authors that are all Nano winners, and you can find their books uh, at Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. So anyway, thanks for everyone for a great show. This was Indie Authors 44. We'll, we'll have Indie Authors 45 next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. <laughs> Again, good night, and thanks, thanks everyone. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>